millions of people from Trinidad and Tobago throughout the Caribbean and around the world remember the music of the mighty Sparrow, Gene and Dinah, Conga Man, and so many other calypsos. The Mighty Sparrow will be my guest in less than a minute. Also, in this program, you'll meet the lady behind the new Merchants Association in Brooklyn, specifically in Canarsie. So tell all of your friends and colleagues to tune in now to Brooklyn 45 on Spectrum, Fios, and uh, Optimum. We begin with the Mighty Sparrow. My friend, welcome to Brooklyn 45. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sam. It is so good to see you again. I grew up listening to your music. And uh, even when I went to CBC as the 008 Sam Tate, I played your music on radio. But oh, I want to begin you. with what is happening right now in Gaza, in Israel, in Palestine. In 1979, you had a vision. And uh, you recorded a song called Vision. Ishmael and uh, Isaac, two different mothers, but the same father. Where did the idea come from for this recording? Well, when you read the Bible, when you pay attention to the Lord's accomplishments, you know, these things come to mind. Put some melody to it, some nice lyrics, and there you have it. Make the people think. And that was way back in 1979. Today, yes, yes, there is yes. still chaos and mayhem in Palestine and Israel. And uh, your lyrics said, how the so right and strong, why you're fighting, suicide bombs. And we read this every day in the news. And you had this vision back in 1979. Yes, 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 indeed. We're well, going to play... We're going to play uh, just 30 seconds um, from this song, Vision, Ishmael and uh, Isaac. Uh, this is awesome, Sparrow, Mighty Sparrow. And there's a photo of you in the album sitting on the piano. Do you play the piano? No, I play the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I, was so, just, I was just on the piano trying to pick out some notes, you know. Oh, okay. It's music, it's well, music you know, so I love it. But you, you picked out a lot of notes. I remember... At CBC, I play the song Jean and Dinah, Rosita and Clementina. What, what was the song about? Who was Jean and Dinah? Characters, characters in the town at the time. You sure? We thought Jean and Dinah were two people, ladies of the night. Yeah, characters, yeah. <laughs> no people that you knew. Of course I knew them, you know. I talked to them. Mm -hmm. I told them I was going to make this song about them. Okay. Uh, so when you say when you say character, you don't mean movie characters. You mean real-life characters, ladies yeah. of the night. Real-life characters, yeah. They named you the Calypso King of the World. What was your most successful Calypso? Well, let me see. Right now, one of my most successful Calypso is one called Salvation, Isaac Ishmael. And Are what about the Conga Man? I envy the Conga Man. But well, that was before. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay. Congo well, Man is on top of the list, too, you know? Yeah, well, we're we're going now 
when you were in the heyday of your life, you had songs like Only a Fool Breaks His Own Heart. That's yeah. correct? That's right. And there was an, an awful one called Pussy Bite Me. Yeah, a little bit of humor, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then there's Drunk and Disorderly. Yeah, learn to walk straight. Mm -hmm. How did you create your music? Where did the ideas come from? Because your music was and is played all over the world. That's why they named you the Calypso King of the World. Where did the ideas come from, Sparrow? Sometimes I'm known as the Supreme Serenader. Ah, you got me there. The Supreme <laughs> Serenader. The Supreme Serenading Calypso King of the World. Okay. The mighty Sparrow. So where do the ideas for your music come from? In life, you know, whatever happens, you know, you pay attention to that. Like, I'm paying attention to all that's going on, and I'm getting all sorts of different ideas right now with the politics and the happenings and who said what and when and, uh, you know, that type of thing, and get my op own opinion about it, and so you have to be careful. careful with it sounds as though... Mm -hmm. Go on. It sounds as though you're not finished yet. You're still going to be recording more music. I would like to. I would like to, to work, you know, work maybe a couple more. Yes. Before hanging up the gloves. <laughs> <laughs> you said this all began with your father. Talk to yeah. us about that. <laughs> Growing up, your dad. What did your dad do? How did he encourage you? But my father was a musician, and he loved Calypso. He's the one who got me involved into listening to Calypso. And uh, he used to have these seventies, you know, these big records, and he would put it on a, a little gramophone <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right there in Bellevue, St. James. And uh, put it on, man. And it, it used to sound funny to me at the time because the time you put on the needle in the mute in the on the on the record, you only hear a lot of. And while that is going on, <laughs> it's like you know, like scratches, and you hear the music in the back. And I used to find some of it funny. So I listened to it, listened to it until I got hooked on it. But when he's not there, he's going to work. I'm home. And I put it on the record. <laughs> and I used to like it when the mother, she got to, to see what I like. And she would encourage me. And so it went for a good while till I started going to school and then I wanted to show off in school and tell them how I could sing Calypso and sing it. <laughs> ah, boy. That's what and it is. no one knew back then that you were going to be the mighty sparrow and have all these hit songs. No. <laughs> Uh, Did you enter into any competitions while you were in school? I don't think I had competitions in school. You just sang. And if the teacher like it, you know, you know get a good look. <laughs> and if you didn't like it, watch you. I tell you, you just watch you tell you, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when no I really started singing, Good. and realizing that I could sing a little bit just when I went in the church. Yeah, so, you know, grew up, I would sing in the church and feel like joined the choir. Singing in Latin and that kind of, you hear me you hear me singing in Latin, you never thought I would sing in Calypso. <laughs> Good. 
Tantum ergo sacramento venere morcernui et antiquum documentum novo cedat ritui restet fides suprimentum sensum deflectui. And then Father would come around. Om Lady Lacklamentum et Clementum. Amen. In my young days, you know. <laughs> yes. Well, listen. People played your songs during carnival. People played your songs all through the year, all over the world. And uh, you were the Calypso king of the world. But not many people knew that your real name was... Tell us. Francisco. Slinger, Francisco. Slinger, you know Slinger? Francisco. You, know, you sure? You sure your name is not Francisco Slinger? No, Slinger is boss. Mm -hmm. Francisco is last. Francisco is family name. <laughs> and you sang in Spanish as well, and you spoke Spanish. Sí. Do you sí, still señor, speak sí. Spanish? A little bit, a little bit, a little here. I like the language, you know, but can't really speak it. Mm. But I can poke fun and, you know, and uh, I, I, I admire and appreciate it. I, I like languages. I like, I say even like, um, when I hear my boy sing Mario Lanza, oh boy, I'm very happy with that. With that voice. And he goes up there and singing it. <laughs> Lovely man. Mm -hmm. But I look I, you... I used to like Pat Watu. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were you ever involved in politics? I know that you sang a song about the then premier. Was he premier or prime minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Eric Williams? Yes, 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 yes. As the king. <laughs> that, that's my king. <laughs> Dr. Eric Williams. Remember the one I made about him? Leave the damn doctor. Here trouble all you. Leave the damn doctor. What did he do? He do. They making so much confusion about race riots. We did that. We should kick them from Scotland Yard. We had the same problem in Trinidad. Leave the damn doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Le some people they were criticizing him, you know, and I didn't like that, you know. Uh huh. Of course, he deserves criticism, you know, whatever, in politics, and that will happen. But boy, I, I, you know, I was really on his side. Mm -hmm. And as I grew up, you know, to go to his home, right there, not too far from his Savannah, uh -huh. to show us, he used to show us a nice. People have been wondering, where did the mighty sparrow go? Some people said they hadn't heard from you at all. Well, now that you're on Brooklyn 45, they're going to see you and they're going to hear from you. And uh, we've been hearing that you have become a Christian. Tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the church is always something that I like. And the music that comes from there, and the way, the preachings, and so I always love to hear that. And, you know, be singing in the choir for quite some time and being in the church. But, you know, I become a, a little part of me. So in spite of me doing my singing and carrying on, I still have that godly side, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Then after a while, I say, you know what? Might as well get baptized. I cut that out. But you know, you try to do that. There's so so many different ideas coming. So maybe, maybe, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I see what certain things happening. Look at what's happening with Palestine, and there's a mm-hmm. lot going on. So yes, I, I think I'm being tempted. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you have you have this hit song called Salvation for Eternity. Yeah, but, uh, but, yeah, one of my big ones. Did you write this song? Be- did you write this song and perform this song before you became a Christian or after? No, before, before, before getting ready to become a Christian. Mm-hmm. Ah, salvation is so lovely, man. You should play some of that. <laughs> well, we're going to play 60 seconds of it so that our viewers will hear Salvation for Eternity. So they just wouldn't hear the other songs that were non salvation songs. <laughs> okay, okay. I can deal with that. Thank you. <laughs> The Conga Man. Where did the idea for the Conga Man come from? When I went to Nigeria, I got all worked up about what's happening across there, and a little bit of humor come across. And uh, when I came back to Trinidad, you know, you know, you know, mix it all together. Mm-hmm. Talk about how I know Africa. And the Congo man is part of Africa. And there's a lot of humor going on, and you know, on each other. And we say, Who is the Congo man? You have to say, You are the Congo man. <laughs> I envy the Congo man. <laughs> yes, I remember. Our- I'm a better Congo man than you. <laughs> I am the Congo man. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wish it was me. I want to shake your hand. The mighty sparrow, the calypso king of the world. And even though you're not performing, um, we still hear your music all over the world. We hear your music. And on behalf of our viewers, Sparrow, we want to thank you for being on Brooklyn 45. Canarsie in Brooklyn now has its own Merchants Association. It's my pleasure to introduce the founder and the executive director of the Canarsie Merchant Association, who will tell us the new opportunities for local businesses, for residents, and for Brooklyn. Let me welcome Noreen Midas. Welcome to Brooklyn 45. Thank you, Sam. It's a pleasure Uh, being here. Well, we are happy to have you here. And I'm sure the residents of Canarsie and uh, Brooklyn are happy to see you and to be able to hear from you. Tell us about this new Merchants Association. Where did this all come from? It really came from just doing community cleanups, quite honestly. We know that, yeah, community cleanups and some plantings. Um, Prior to COVID, Senator Prasad had worked to try to organize the merchants. Um, But 
a week before COVID, we had a meeting and I didn't decide to start. I think it called me and I'm happy that I answered the call here in Canarsie. Of course, a week later, uh, COVID would hit us, everything shut down. Uh, we would later learn we didn't have um, too many vacancies here. We started around, along Rockaway Parkway. Um, and so we didn't have a lot of vacancies, but we know a lot of our businesses um, definitely were uh, suffering, uh, particularly our black um, owned businesses, many which never did recover. So I saw an opportunity. I come from a family business. I have my own online business and I wanted to help. I just, I've lived in Canarsie for over 28 years. I'm a homeowner. Of course, I care about my community. This is where I've raised my children. So I just wanted to um, give back. And I began to learn through meetings with Brooklyn Chamber that there were a lot of resources that could come into the community if there was an organized um, entity. And so as a result of um, a lot of community partnerships. I like to say that we were birthed out of pandemic partnerships. Uh, we began. We began three and a half years ago, and now we are a merchant association. What's the membership like? So there are over 367 businesses here in Canarsie. When we started, it was just along Rockaway Parkway uh, between Foster and Flatlands, you can imagine. And so out of all of that, we currently um, a year ago decided that we would extend it beyond Rockaway Parkway to include all of Canarsie. We have 35 members. We have 35 amazing entrepreneurs who are visionaries. Um, I want to also let you know that um, about seven decades ago, we had the original Merchant As Association here in Canarsie. And um, about two decades ago, there was another attempt and here we are again. So this is our third go around at it. And this is going to work. How did you know that, Sam? Um, a lot of merchants, and that was one of the challenges, they hadn't seen a merchant association work for a few decades. And um, they were used to just controlling their environment. Merchants associations happened throughout Brooklyn and the city, um, throughout the five boroughs. And I saw an opportunity to bring resources to the community. I saw an opportunity, uh, COVID taught us that we have to work together. Um, and so community, um, as a result, we had to not only look to see how we could support the local merchants, but how we can make a difference in the community. Uh, where is your office located? We actually are located in one of the original spaces um, of the Merchant Association at 1370 Rockaway Parkway, Silk Cove Lounge. Actually, the owner there, Mark Kerr, he is the president of the Merchant Association. I've been hearing about holiday pop-ups. What are these? Wow. So um, one of the things that we've been doing is giving an opportunity to individuals who have online businesses to be able to showcase in a storefront. And so we started in the month of September. We've hosted 22 um, local businesses, entrepreneurs who are looking to be able to grow their businesses. OK, and uh, this will continue indefinitely. It will continue. We, well, it's a, a, a project that we decided to start in the month of September. It'll end in December. Um, again, we're always looking for opportunities, whether it is how we can come together to um, create cleaner, um, greener. We just won for the second time in a row uh, the Greenest Block in Brooklyn competition. How we can partner with other local um, organizations to address the needs here in the community. Uh, we just had our second annual Turkey Giveaway Initiative. Um, throughout the year, we have public events. Um, we want to respond to the needs. Um, we had our um, Apple Festival um, we have uh, weekly Wellness Wednesdays where we provide food as well as a resource to the community on Rockaway Parkway, right at the end of the L train station. 
I hear you have opportunities as well for retired seniors. Yes, we are a volunteer um, organization because we're only a year old. We turned a year um, um, last this this October, and so a lot of our um, volunteers are seniors, and they are amazing. And they have allowed us to be able to not only host our public events and our weekly wellness. Um, Wellness Wednesdays. Wellness Wednesdays, yes. Wellness Wednesdays, but they have allowed us to be able to showcase and be able to access a lot of resources from the city. The Canarsie Merchants Association. Wow. And now uh, residents of Canarsie, Brooklyn, and small businesses. And uh, are there a mixture of small businesses and the large businesses that are resident in Canarsie that are members of your association? Yes, we are. Um, we just have a, a local uh, supermarket that joined us along the corridor. Since we started a year ago, we have four new businesses that have joined. So we have an array of businesses, some that have been just a few months, as well as those who have been with us for about 30 years. Okay, the Canarsie Merchants Association. And Noreen Midas, you are not only the founder, but you are the CEO. So you are the person who they will come to to get yes. more information and to expand the Merchants Association. Yes. Well, thank you for being on Brooklyn 45. Thank you so much, Sam. I, I appreciate to be able to share um, our work. Thank you, Noreen Midas, for providing information that will enlighten and benefit our viewers. And the mighty Spar, there is so much about you and the Calypso that people either forgot or didn't know. So thank you, too, for being on Brooklyn 45. And to our viewers, we thank you for watching this program. We invite you to partner with Brooklyn 45. And you can do this in many different ways. We are a 501c3 community TV program. So when you support us with a gift, you benefit. And our communities benefit from that as well. Please tell your family, friends, and work colleagues to watch Brooklyn 45 on cable TV and on YouTube and support us, be a part of what we do. On behalf of our Brooklyn 45 team, I am Sam Tate. Brooklyn 45 is a 501c3 not-for-profit and we welcome your support. Check out our website, brooklyn45.com, and feel free to donate or share it with your friends and family. Have any comments or questions? Send them to our Facebook, facebook.com slash brooklyn45tv. If you have any questions or topics you think we should cover next, shoot me an email over at brooklyn45tv at gmail.com. Thank you again for watching.